So if you're like me, you think about multiple realities or the multiverse in general on a regular basis. And the current crisis on infinite earths going on on the CW's Arrowverse line of series, that's feeding the DC geek in me pretty hardcore. Welcome, welcome, folks. I'm Joe from Joe Thinks. And today we're going to do a fan art mashup. In the spirit of Crisis on Infinite Earths, this art project, this mashup, is based around that whole concept. I'm going to draw a few different Superman and a Deadpool like Superman as well. Now, spoiler alert, I'm going to talk about Crisis on Infinite Earths, the mega crossover that's happening in the CW Arrowverse. But I'm going to start off with a little bit of the Nicolas Cage Superman from the movie that never happened, Superman Lives. Now think about that. Think about that. A Tim Burton Superman movie. I mean, this is Tim Burton, Nightmare Before Christmas, Edward Scissorhands, Big Fish. He would have made an awesome Superman movie. And he still yet lives. You know, Tim, you still could. Now, obviously, I'll link in the description some stuff about the Nicolas Cage being a Superman thing. Kevin Smith made a documentary about it. It would have been awesome. I read a rumor that Nicolas Cage was approached about being in Crisis on Infinite Earth, but asked for too much money and did not participate in it. Now, I decided to include Superboy, too, or at least my own kind of rendition of Superboy that I remember from the 90s with the leather jacket. I did pretty much this entire picture from memory, so if I messed up any of the major features of like crypto or anything, sorry about that. But overall, I was pretty happy with how the base turned out and then the line over it. And I made up the cat. The whole idea actually was uh, for it to be like cat pool, but I was on this whole, I'm drawing everybody to be Superman role while I was creating the base for it, so I just kept doing it anyway. And I think it turned out pretty good. In the middle Superman, I was originally trying to go for Tom Welling, and after a while I just stopped and drew a generic looking Superman. I still thought he looked pretty good. The whole concept is that the generic looking Superman is just staring at Deadpool. In the CWDC world, Arrow has been cancelled, which is interesting, yet they're going to continue through with many of the other superhero shows, and obviously they're doing these massive, huge crossovers and starting new shows. It's just, it might be time for that to become something of the background, so to speak. The Green Arrow becomes like Batman. He doesn't have his own show. He's a figure in the background. Superman 2, he's in the background. Tyler does a great job. Tyler Hoechlin, well, he's he's made a great Superman from Supergirl on CW. He's I've been happy with him as Superman. Henry Cavill right now in the like movie world, or when I think Superman, I, I honestly think Henry Cavill right now, just because I, I really, really liked Man of Steel. I like the way that they depicted Krypton at the beginning of the movie. I do have my reservations about the fact that Superman did kill Zod, but there really wasn't it. Zod was so extreme that he wouldn't have stopped, and he had already killed so many people. The subjects of what happens in Batman vs. Superman, or Superman vs. Batman, Dawn of Justice, Batman's entire premise is that Superman is just so incredibly powerful that he will attract entities like him, and their world will, will never be safe again. Now, as a DC fan, kind of used to them changing actors, particularly about Batman. We've just kind of gotten used to it, and it's been a breath of fresh air thus far anyway, and please let it continue to be this way, that Henry Cavill, or Cavill, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, is our current Superman, because is I really like Henry's portrayal of Superman. I hope they keep Henry Cavill as Superman through and through, because at this point, it would be weird. It would be so weird. It would be weird like Ryan Reynolds not being Deadpool. We already have to deal with the stress that comes with Hugh Jackman not wanting to play Wolverine anymore. I mean, I get it, but it's still stressful. Now, I personally am looking forward to more Deadpool movies, and I'm curious to see how Disney takes their approach to Deadpool Nearly everyone I know says that Disney's just going to destroy Deadpool. They're going to ruin the franchise. I, however, have faith in Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds basically made the Deadpool movie franchise what it is. We just have to trust in Ryan Reynolds. Also, if Deadpool does flop, we know who to blame. 
Now again, I originally intended for the cat to be a Deadpool cat, cat pool, as I called it. However, I was again kind of on a roll while I was drawing with the bases and I began inadvertently drawing a Superman kind of outfit on him. If you notice, a few of the Superman initially while I was working on the lining over the base and the base, they were drawn kind of like a Batman. You know how Superman doesn't wear gloves. His sleeves come right down to his wrists. And some of them have gloves in my base. However, I changed what I was initially planning for the cat, and I like the way it turned out. You know, more like a crypto alternate. What if crypto was a cat instead of a dog? Is the way that it, it turned out to feel for me, which is awesome. Now, the background for me was challenging because I struggled kind of with what I wanted to do in my approach whether I wanted to do just an extremely vague background that focused exclusively like profiles, an ensemble profile, and I was like, no, well maybe, maybe I do, yeah. And then talking with my wife later about it, we decided that, you know, just making a generic background wasn't gonna fit this particular picture. And I decided to do like a Fortress of Solitude-like background. Now I spent way more time on concept of the background and what you actually get to see in the final image with all the figures in front of it. But I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. And I can really relate with the concept of like your own Fortress of Solitude. I've always needed my own place to just kind of get away. Not like a bedroom or a bathroom, but you know, your own safe place that's still kind of away. A lot of, you know, folks have their bathroom or maybe it is their bedroom for you bedroom was never really a super safe place for me just my stuff my wife and I have always called my place either my man cave or my lair it contains all my treasures and my hobbies and such but it's also a place I go sometimes just to think think through problems do planning that type of stuff now getting the backgrounds to look like crystal is a little bit more challenging than I thought it would be because I looked up a few tutorials because I really didn't know how to do this other than just coming up with a concept of how to do it in my mind and then roughing it out. So I see a crystal challenge coming in the future here as I want to hone in on this more and focus on this more. I really like the style of crystal and want to focus on getting a little bit better at that. So I've been participating in Skillshare classes. I've been actually been trying to learn more about Clip Studio Paint. Since I bought it, I should know how to use it. And I've just been using it like a basic drawing program. And I can see in there there's all kinds of buttons and gadgets and gadgets that I don't use. Well, already I've learned that it has a full capability of differentiating between vector and rasterized layers. So that is absolutely awesome. And I immediately incorporated that knowing that that's something that it could do, which vector layers allow you to manipulate individual points within a line. And rasterized layers don't allow you to do that, but they do allow for better blending and stuff and making for masks which I'm excited to learn more about doing that. Obviously I'm doing this all in my free time, and right now I'm not, I don't know, I wouldn't say I'm super swamped at work, but I have a lot of things going on. So I'm not getting a lot of extra art time right now, if you know what I mean. To elaborate a little bit more, I use vector layers for like the lining, and I use rasterized layers for the coloring and the shading underneath. To be fair, like the lighter parts of shading and highlighting, I will sometimes use a vector layer, sometimes use a rasterized layer. That's where it kind of depends on how big the, it is. It depends on a different set of factors that go into that. You could use either or. I just find it easier to use a vector layer for lining because you can move lines around and stuff. So overall, the background was super, super fun for me to make. So much so, like I said, I'm gonna do more videos about this type of technique for creating crystals and stuff like that. And I wanna hone in on that digitally. It was really fun for me. Now, Superman pool. I studied calligraphy in high school and a little bit in early college. I know it doesn't show in what I'm doing, but I do try to make the words at least somewhat sensible. Now, for this, I wanted to juxtapose the name Superman and Deadpool in some which way, but, you know, dead Superman didn't have the same ring as Superman pool, so I went with Superman pool. Deadpool traveling to different worlds collecting supermen to help in crisis on infinite earths because he's broken through the fourth wall and the fifth wall right into a totally different continuity. 
and you can see in his pose. Don't I look good in blue? So this is my fan art mashup of Superman and Deadpool. So if you like this, go ahead and hit the like button down there. And if you haven't, subscribe and hit the bell and you'll be notified when I release new videos. I release videos on Sundays. And if you want to support this channel, check out my social media links in the description below as well. And remember, be kind to one another and use your turn signals.